113 Questions About Evolution with John Perry. Evolutionary question number 17. How do new blood vessels evolve? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Stated Casually YouTube channel. John Perry here. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're not yet subscribed. Uh, you know, if you like to learn about evolution, that is. If not, then, you know, whatever. Go do something else. Today, we're going to talk about how blood vessels, new blood vessels, evolve. And this question is kind of near and dear to my heart because when I was a little kid, you know, I was raised in a religious family. And the religion that I belonged to, most people weren't, uh, you know, young earth creationists. They were, you know, a lot of people were fine with the theory of evolution. But I had a Sunday school teacher when I was really young. I was probably five years old. And she was a young earth creationist, and she would spend her time, she was actually the substitute Sunday school teacher, and when, whenever she got a chance to substitute, she'd get on her anti-evolution soapbox. And I was five, and so I just, you know, she was an adult, so I just believed everything she told me. One of the arguments against evolution that she made is blood vessels. She said, let's say that there's a mutation that gives an animal longer legs. Well, you need blood vessels to supply those longer legs because the legs are longer, they need more blood vessels. And our blood vessels are extremely complex. And it is true that our blood vessels are extremely complex. She told us that, you know, if you were to stretch your blood vessels end to end, they're so complex, some of them are so small but also long, that it would stretch thousands of miles. I think she said it would stretch all around the circumference of the earth. I'm not sure if that's true, but it's definitely true that our blood vessel system is extremely long. I mean, if you were to, you know, pull out blood vessels, if that was your thing, and lay them end to end, yeah, it would be, it, I'm, I would not be surprised to learn that it's, it would be thousands of miles. So what she said is that if a mutation makes your legs longer, you have to have hundreds of other mutations that will design the new vascular structures that would supply those extra long legs with the appropriate amount of blood so that you can get oxygen to your cells and so on. And this, you know, I was like a five-year-old. I didn't really understand most of this cellular biology stuff anyways, because I never learned it. But I just, what she said stuck with me. Sorry, my dog's freaking out over here. Okay, Manilow's going to be in the video. So he was, uh, he was having a fit over there. Hi, buddy. So she's telling me... <laughs> What she said stuck with me for quite a while. Uh, when I was learning about evolution for the first time, I started learning about it on a David Attenborough video, actually, and then reading about it in the encyclopedia when no one was around because I thought I would get in trouble. Uh, th this thing about blood vessels really stuck with me. So, okay. Manila wants to go. Several years went by. I, I never found an answer to this blood vessel question. Several years went by, and... A friend of our family's came by and he was telling us that we need to clip our dog's toenails because if they get too long, blood vessels will start to grow into the tips of the toenails so that when you do clip them, eventually they'll actually bleed. And I thought, what? Blood vessels don't have to evolve with thousands of mutations in order to fill a new space if tissue grows? blood vessels will grow to fill and supply that tissue. So, wait a minute. My Sunday school teacher was wrong. Eventually, I grew up and I, you know, learned how to use the internet. And I was able to learn about this process called angiogenesis. So angiogenesis is how new blood vessels form. It's, it's the process. Now, there's actually a different process for the, the, the formation of the very first blood vessel structures in an embryo. But this is how, after those first little vessel buds form in an embryo, this is how they form after that. When oxygen-starved tissue develops, so the fetus is growing and there are cells that have developed that are not getting enough oxygen, they start to secrete a molecule called VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. So Endothelial cells are these cells that make up a blood vessel. So all the cells here that are pink, those are the blood vessel cells. The blue ones here are, you know, like the tissue cells. And then the, the pink ones are the endothelial cells. And these cells are really neat. They form the wall of a blood vessel. Well, 
they line the wall of a blood vessel. They actually excrete stuff outside of their cells to form kind of a sheath around them as well. So you have these cells and then you have a sheath that they actually form on the outside of, of, the, of the vessel, which isn't really shown here. But as an embryo is forming, certain cells will start to not be able to get enough oxygen because there's not enough blood flow to them. And when that happens, these cells will start excreting this protein right here. This diagram shows you the protein backbone. If you're used to looking at these types of diagrams, you can tell that this is a really small protein. It's a very small protein that's excreted from the cells and it acts as a signal. So it just, the cells produce a bunch of it and it starts just dissipating around the cell in every direction, every possible direction. Now these cells, they exist in these really convoluted mazes of other cells and other collagen fibers and so on. But the genius of this system is these little proteins, they're small enough that they can just bounce around between cells and they just dissipate in the fluid that exists until they hit a blood vessel. And when they hit a blood vessel, the cells inside that blood vessel, so if we go back to the the, uh, the picture of the cells here, those cells, when they get hit by this protein, they put out a branch and they start growing towards the, you can think of it as like they're growing towards the scent of the cell that's that's starving, that, that needs oxygen. They follow these little proteins as if they were smells, like a hound tracking a, uh, a rabbit. This is so brilliant. <laughs> I say brilliant, but it's actually, it's it's stupid. You have this system, these cells are just excreting molecules in every which way into this convoluted maze that is the body tissue of this growing organism. And the by just bouncing around, having lots of these little proteins just bouncing around every which way, the ones that end up hitting the blood vessel first are the ones that happen to have bounced down the shortest possible pathway towards the blood vessel. So the blood vessel, just by following that scent as it grows towards the oxygen-starved tissue, it will, just by default, just as a mere consequence of entropy, it will be following the shortest possible route to that oxygen-starved tissue. And as it gets closer to that oxygen-starved tissue, it's going to be bringing blood with it, which will be bringing oxygen. And so this, the body tissue will actually start to get enough oxygen. And when it, when it gets sufficient oxygen, it's going to stop secreting these vague F molecules. And what's going to happen is that, you know, different vessels surrounding this will have grown together and met in the middle and blood will start passing through. And this tissue will now have access to all the oxygen that it needed. This is absolutely beautiful. It's just really stupid interactions. I'm panicking and sending out a molecule in every which direction. And then another another structure is like, I will grow towards this signal. These two mindless actions end up solving what in computer science we call the, the traveling salesman problem. If you got a salesman that has to visit multiple cities during the day in his route to sell people stuff, what is the shortest possible route to hit all the cities that are needed to be hit and then get back home at the end of the night? And blood vessels solve this equation, it's a really complicated equation, just by these two stupid behaviors. By oxygen-starved tissues sending out signals in any which way, and blood vessels growing to where those signals are coming from. It's awesome. The answer to our question, how is it that new blood vessels evolve? Actually, they don't. <laughs> this system emerged very early on in our evolutionary history, and it allows blood vessels to infiltrate any new tissue that ends up evolving. So if I have a mutation that makes me grow extra long legs, it's not a problem. The blood vessels will just automatically go towards that oxygen-starved tissue as I'm developing as a fetus and supply that oxygen-starved tissue with the appropriate amount of oxygen. Now, this does kind of force us to ask the question, well, how did the first, you know, vessel growth signaling pathway evolve? And that is a question that I will address some other day. Next question.